Well, today we got a little bonus video for you. Did not expect this one because we do have the Nintendo Prime podcast tonight. But you guys know I'm not just going to sit on breaking news. I'm going to bring it to you. And now look, today we are talking about a rumor, yet another rumor about Nintendo Switch 2. But this one's actually coming from a well-known Nintendo insider known as Necro Felipe. Lima, I don't know, I pronounce his name wrong all the time. He's from Brazil, and he is the owner-runner of Universo Nintendo. Look, he has a lot of credible sources. He's been right on a ton of stuff about prior Nintendo Directs. He's been right on stuff dealing with individual games and the news coming for those games. He's actually broken stories on Nintendo Switch dev kits and stuff last year, Nintendo Switch 2 dev kits, yada, yada, yada. He never really got all wrapped up in the Switch Pro stuff back in the day, but hey, I'm just pointing out that this guy seems pretty well connected, and today he gave us maybe the best technical specs we have to date for Nintendo Switch. He gathered every single thing that's been talked about about the Nintendo Switch 2 behind the scenes, brought it together, combined it with his own sources. No, this isn't some random newspaper in Taiwan or a forum user or just some random person on Twitter. This is a real video game journalist with a real reputation on the line Throwing out there the known, quote-unquote, rumored specs for the Nintendo Switch 2. So are you guys ready? Are you ready? Let's dive right in. So here you can see we are over at Universal Nintendo, and you see a technical article. Now this, I will warn, is translated from Portuguese, so it is Google Translate, so it's not going to be 100% perfect, but the specs are what the specs are, right? It's pretty hard to mistranslate that. Anyway, you see the technical article on what configurations could we have on the Nintendo's next hardware. And as you scroll down to this, you see, although it may not seem like it, a lot is technically known about the device thanks to information leaked from the NVIDIA documents and also due to rumors spread by more reliable sources throughout 2023, including people like Nate the Hate, etc., etc. Thanks to all of this, it was possible to gather a general basis of what we can theoretically expect in the technical specifications of a new system. Let's get to the information, oh man. Baby. Oh, baby. So the system on a chip, the actual SOC that runs everything is the NVIDIA Tegra T239. Look, we've known this for a while since the NVIDIA leak last year. Codename Drake. It's using a lithograph TSMC 4N. I believe that means this is going to be a four nanometer process node, which is really important because that is one of the most power efficient nodes. If it went with eight nanometers, it actually could hurt the performance of the chip. So this will give them more performance headroom at lower wattages. Very important for a mobile system. The CPU is going to be an eight core, 878C at whatever. That's the one thing we don't know. We don't know the gigahertz or, you know, whatever this thing's going to run at in terms of its clock speeds, but it is going to be eight cores of eight, eight, <laughs> of a seven, eight C. Oh my gosh, guys. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get through this. We have the GPU, which is apparently a GA 10 F slash 12 ampere SMs. And this comes from the NVIDIA RTX 3000 series. Now here's where we get into some interesting stuff. We have performance metrics for the GPU. So in portable, it is expected that it's going to be between 1.0 seven to two teraflops which is massive that's a huge leap already over the current nintendo switch and then in dock performance anywhere from 3.5 to 4.5 teraflops now again we don't obviously know exactly where it is that's why there's a range but within that range is very very likely and that is utterly awesome obviously t flops are not everything for how well a system can perform but they do give you an idea of how it compares to other platforms ram wise now this is where we get something that says hey you know that taiwanese report throw it in the trash we're either getting 12 gigabytes maybe even 16 gigabytes of lpddr5 slash x that is awesome that's exactly what we want we want at least 12 ideally 16 but that is right in the range i believe nate the hate recently put out there that hey it might be 16. We shouldn't rule that out because I don't know, it's probably what's on the dev kits. Maybe the dev kits have 24, and so that's why they're like, hey, maybe it'll be 16. Dev kits always are a bit more beefed up than the actual systems at retail. All right, moving on. Dock performance is probably at 102 gigabytes a second in terms of its RAM memory speed. Portable performance is likely reduced to about 88 gigabytes per second. Again, this is just what we're, our best guesses are at the moment. Cache-wise, there is the presence of a SysLC unknown. Tegra GPUs, however, can access the CPU cache to optimize themselves. Also, the display, and this is 
This is pretty cool because we knew eight inches. We heard eight inches before, but eight inches at 1080p. And I know a bit of a downer from the last report, 60 Hertz instead of 120. This is far more realistic, but hey, 1080p. That's really nice to hear. Internal storage. This will make people happy as well because that Taiwan News report's like, oh, 64 gigabytes. In fact, I think the whole reason he put out this report was to refute that Taiwanese newspaper. So internal storage will be at least 256 gigabytes, maybe 512, and it's going to be using UFS 3.X is probably the candidate, it says, for the read and write technology, which is really, really fast stuff. The cartridges, they don't really know anything. There's speculation and rumors around it using 3D NAND, which is better than the 2D NAND they use on the current Switch ones. It's a different technology. It's faster. You can do uh, more storage for cheaper prices, yada, yada, yada. But we'll see. We don't know. Expandable storage is unknown at the moment, as is the battery. Now, if we get into what he says down here, he says, these specifications above, if achieved, even if there's no processing clock speed per hour, would all already allow the system to, to surpass Valve's Steam Deck. In addition to guaranteeing gaming performance beyond that delivered by the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3000 cards with technologies with DLSS, Reflex, and Ray reconstruction. Hell yeah, the 8-inch would allow for an increase in resolution in portable mode, which is at 720p on Switch, but it would be 1080p on the new system. And 5, 12 gigabyte internal storage is a great way, obviously. They're going to do two devices he's mentioning. Maybe they have a 512 device and an entry-level device at 256. Again, that might be speculation on his part. So, and he says, for now, this is what we have to share to you about these specifications. Are you excited? And am I excited? This sounds phenomenal. I told you guys that I had a feeling this thing was going to be more powerful than a Steam Deck. And look, I understand this is just a rumor. Put your tinfoil hats on. Bring the salt. Throw it over your right shoulder. Make sure the lid is on, however, because we don't want to make too big of a mess. The whole point is this is still a rumor. You need to obviously take it with all of the caveats that rumors come with, right? Rumors are not verified information. In fact, they're supposed to have doubtful in nature. So like we can't verify any of this. What we can say is this, if true, sounds incredible. This is the kind of system we want. At least 12 gigabytes of RAM, a pretty up-to-date ARM CPU. The 78C is one of their more recent CPUs. Having the Ampere technology, but also having that teraflops to go right along with it, Boom, that's what we want. Ray reconstruction. Boom, that's what we want. This, this is awesome. This is what we want. It's a combination of stuff we've already talked about last year combined with a bit more information in there, such as the performance. We didn't know about the teraflop stuff. That, to me, was maybe the most fascinating part. So that and the 1080p screen. Hell yeah. 1080p at 8 inches. Some would say that's 6 inches too many. Hey, it's all right, folks. Just stay tuned. We're going to probably be talking about more of this on tonight's Nintendo Prime podcast. Be sure to tune in at 8 p.m. Central tonight. Otherwise, we'll catch you guys in the next video.